Hi guys, Andy here. Online security and privacy is more important now than I think it ever has been. And I'm gonna show you today what you need and what you need to be doing to make sure that your security is tight as it should be with this, the Yubico YubiKey 5. So before we go on to take a look at the YubiKey 5, I would like to just mention my Patreon page, so patreon.com slash AAUK. Please do consider donating a dollar or two or a pound or two um, a month. It really will help the channel grow. So for most people, security, what stands between the bad guys and your information is a password. Eight digits perhaps, maybe it's got some characters and numbers and capitals and things in it, but that's it. Now, unfortunately, You've probably seen some in the news. Um, there's been lots of hacks and leaks with millions of people's information spread around the internet, including in some cases, passwords. Um, I did a video last year actually on passwords and how they work and how you can be as strong as possible. But even then, you could be, um, you could be subject to a phishing attack where somebody tricks you into thinking that it's a real website. You put your login details in and basically you're just submitting your login details to the bad person. The best way to combat these is to introduce a second step of security. The most common step would be an SMS text. So maybe you log into a website. It says, right, please now enter the code that we're gonna send you. They text you a code, you enter that code on the website. That's pretty secure, because that means it's coming just to your phone. So if someone in a different country has got your password, they can't do anything with it because they haven't got your phone. Having said that, there is ways that people can spoof uh, your phone number and they can get around that. Um, then another option would be to use an authentic auth authentic authentication app um, like Google Authenticator where you log into a website, it says right enter the code that's in the app. The app will have a six digit code which changes every 30 seconds or a minute. You put that code in, it lets you in. And again, someone in a different country somewhere else won't have that code and won't be able to get in. But again, in the same way that they sometimes can spoof a website making you think it's the real thing, you enter your details, they enter your details on the real website, they get the request for the code, they put the request for the code on the dodgy website and you go, and, uh, oh, it's 631269. They put 631269 on the, on, the, on the real website, sorry, and they've got access to all of whatever it might be, your online banking perhaps. So still, that's not a great way to protect things. What perhaps is the best way is with USB two-factor authentication key like this YubiKey 5. By design, it's nice and small. It's small enough that you can attach it to your keys and it doesn't really add any bulk to your bunch. Um, there's no need for a battery or a network connectivity, although it does have inbuilt NFC for mobile devices. The little gold plate with the Y on it in the middle is also a touch-sensitive keypad used um, as an extra layer of security just to check there's an actual user that's accessing it, not some weird bot. So let's take a look at how we're gonna get set up. We're gonna to browse to yubico.com slash start. Um, there's quite a lot of useful information on the website to be fair. One of the first things you need to do is just identify which YubiKey you have. So mine is the YubiKey 5. So we're gonna go into there and we see a selection of the services that work with it. But we're gonna take a look at Google in this case. Almost everyone has a video showing you how you set it up and also some text instructions, which generally I found a bit easier. I didn't really bother watching some of the videos. But in most cases, you have to turn on some form of two-factor authentication, normally the SMS version. Then you can add that you've got a key. When that's done, you put the key in. When it prompts, like so, pop it into your USB port. It should hopefully then detect the key and say, right, touch the key to just to show that you're there. And then you're done. And that's pretty much how it works on all the different services that I've tried so far. Bear in mind, 
you need to have a backup version of logging in, a backup two-factor authentication way. Uh, and also bear in mind that your security is only as strong as the weakest version that you set up. So I've got Google Authenticator, I've got text messaging, um, just in case I should lose the key. So you might be wondering, well, how does it work? Don't ask me, it's not freaking magic or something, I think. Um, no, but I don't entirely understand the system, but the key has a secret on it, which is used to generate a code, one that stays on the device, one that gets sent to the server. Um, information is passed back and forth between the two until both are happy that everything is legit. Um, also, this is the only key from what I've read somewhere that supports FIDO2, which I think is a new version of everything. Um, I don't exactly know what that means either, if I'm very honest, but it's got to be a good thing if it's the newer version. So what I think of the YubiKey 5, I think it's really handy, it's very good. I think it's still quite early days, so Twitter is listed as being compatible, and it works on the browser, I set it up there, no problem at all. Um, again, using the SMS authentication first, and then just telling it, right, I've got a key, put the key in, and it all works great. But then when I installed the app on my OnePlus 7 Pro, I was kind of half expecting then to use the NFC in the key to authenticate. It didn't, it just texted me instead. In fact, when I selected, no, I want to use my key. It said, sorry, can't use that at the moment. So I was a little bit of a shame. It did, however, work fine when I dug out an old phone and sort of wiped it and put my account back on. I said, I'd like to use my NFC key. He said, yeah, go on then. And uh, it worked fine. Interestingly, it sort of triggered LastPass as the default, but it had already done the action that it needed to do. And my account was added to the phone. Also bear in mind, you're always only as secure as your weakest point of entry. So at the moment, I've got this key set up on my Google account, but I've also got Google Authenticator, I've got SMS texting, um, there's the on phone where it just says, is this you? So you need to bear in mind, if even if that's my preferred method, if those other options are there, someone that's got my password can use any of those options. So if they have been able to somehow steal my text message, my, my phone number, they can just say, well, send me a text, and it will send them a text. So really, I should remove all those other weaker options and have just the key. The problem is then if I lose the key, I'm in big trouble. Google say they can get you your accounts back, but it could take like up to a week. Um, for a lot of people, that's not really an option. Your perhaps better option would be to get two keys. So one that perhaps lives on your keys, and one that perhaps lives in a safe place at home. So should you lose that or be robbed or whatever, mugged, um, and vice versa, if the one at home gets stolen, you've still got yours and you've replaced, you can cancel that one and get another one. So hopefully you would never get locked out of all of your accounts. But I think it is generally a very good option that probably more of us should use. I've only, I've only just really sort of thought about it myself and I've been using computers and I'm online and you know, I'm probably more tech savvy than most. Um, and I'm only just thinking, well, oh, maybe I should try and spread the word, share this video, I suppose. It was interesting, I did see, I looked on Amazon, I looked at some of the Amazon reviews, and a lot of people saying, oh, it's quite hard to set up. It really isn't, it's really very simple. I would try and help, if you're having trouble, put some comments down below. If it's with specific software and specific vendors, I might not be able to. But as I say, generally, you look for where it gives you an option to enable two-factor authentication. You normally have to do that via a text message first, and then you say, I've got a key, and it says, all right, put your key in the USB drive, you put it in the USB slot, sorry, and then you go, right out, you're all set. It really is that simple. So I'd love to know your thoughts, leave them down in the comments down below. I do read all of them, I promise. Um, also, you might want to consider checking out some of the other videos on my channel. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. That's all for now though, my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.